the Center of Endourology and Stone Diseases in the Cleveland Clinic is committed to provide the best medical care for patients. We work in innovation, new technology, new surgical techniques, but we also want to understand better how the stones are formed in the patient, and how can we prevent the formation of new stones. I think the main characteristic of our program is that we are six endourologists working in the same group, and altogether, stones, which is our main focus of treatment and non-oncological cases, benign prostate enlargement, are the uh, two main areas of our department. The most complex surgery that we do perform for stones, which is the percutaneous nephrodototomy, we have transformed the surgery into a minimally invasive surgery. We now create the access uh, using ultrasound in most of our cases. The challenging part of the surgery used to be a big hole, now we have transformed it in a very, very small hole, which is no more than five millimeters. When we are speaking about fragment in the stone, we have new laser technology that we use inside the kidney, allow us to break stones in a less invasive fashion. This Two elements decrease the risk of bleeding and the risk of infection. And all this together allow us to treat the patients in an outpatient basis. The advancements in laser technology has really paralleled the advancement in um, ureteroscope technology. More recently, in the last five to six years, we've had new technologies come out in laser, such as the thulium fiber laser. And this has been a step forward in terms of how we treat stones and disintegrate stones. We're now able to completely dust stones into fine particles uh, that can be more easily cleared. The developments in lasers have also enabled us to treat uh, tumors in the kidney endoscopically so we can manage these tumors more safely with less bleeding and more effective removal. So these advancements have certainly improved the way we treat not only stones but also cancer. All of those things have enabled us to really get our patients out mostly the same day and patients love that. So this has been a big bonus for all of us. My research, it really all focuses either on the understanding or treatment of kidney stones or enlarged prostates. I specialize in prostate enucleation or a procedure that's called HOLEP. HOLEP is very useful for patients with complex histories. In particular, I've had a number of patients who were told they have to live with a catheter for the rest of their life, but we were able to treat them here with prostate enucleation. With respect to my research on kidney stones, one of the ones I'm proudest of is actually looking at women who are pregnant who end up getting kidney stones. We've looked at radiation exposure, anesthesia use, as well as outcomes of the babies or the neonates themselves. By doing these studies, I think we've been able to provide a lot of information to help reassure both the treating urologist and the patient in how to best manage this pretty complex and stressful scenario. Cleveland, like many areas in the United States, is a disadvantaged city. And patients within disadvantaged cities often have poor access to good nutrition, poor access to health care, or job insecurity. There's different metrics that we can use to really examine um, social determinants of health, but one that we have used here is Area Deprivation Index. And we found that within our patient population, Area Deprivation Index is associated with worse 24-hour urine parameters and a higher risk of recurrent stone disease. So we look at these different factors and we try to see if there's different ways that we can either study them further or mitigate that risk. So similarly for patients with comorbidities, we really look at what mitigating factors could drive their care and how we can apply our advanced technologies and access to advanced technologies to their care and their kidney stone disease. Part of the DNA of a Cleveland Clinic is uh, not only provide the best care for patients, but also uh, education and research. We are doing research in, uh, in two main fields. One field is uh, working on nanotechnology or nanoparticles being tested now to treat direct kidney stones. Nanotechnology is the science of manipulating materials at nanoscale level. And at nanoscale level, materials have unique properties that are not available at bulk scale. We utilize the unique properties of these nanomaterials 
for treating different healthcare challenges. For example, we have developed a technology that uses the ability of certain nanomaterials to convert light energy into heat and acoustic shock waves to break down the stones. Another example is we are developing new nanomaterials that are antimicrobial and they can prevent a biofilm formation and infection in urethral stents that are placed after kidney stone removal. On the other field, we are working on microbiome to understand what is the relation of microbiome and stone formation. So the microbiome can influence kidney stone formation through the degradation and production of uremic toxins in the gut, and it can also directly influence the pH and the production of calcium chelators and competitors in the urinary tract. So in my laboratory, um, we study interactions between the microbiome and kidney stone formation through clinical, uh, preclinical, biochemical, and microbiological experiments using cutting-edge high-throughput uh, omics technologies and modern computational tools. So understanding how the microbiome influences kidney stone formation can help improve prevention and treatment by improving antibiotic stewardship as well as reintroducing beneficial bacteria into patients to help prevent lithogenesis. A lot of the innovations that we've talked about, whether it's ureteroscopy, whether it's uh, miniaturization of percutaneous nephrolithotomy surgery, all of these translate to better patient experience. And this is only going to evolve because we're really seeing the tip of the iceberg in terms of what we're going to be seeing in the next few years. We don't have to have a one-size-fits-all for our patients. Because we have access to these advanced technologies, we really can tailor our approach to the patient. We need to work in innovation that can improve at the end the outcomes for patients. The main goal is to provide the best care for patients suffering from stone disease. Thanks for watching, but now an important disclaimer. The content of this video is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Viewers should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice for any medical condition they may have and should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions.